Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Shame. It's me, Ella, and today I'm going to do the 15 Yarny YouTube channel questions. <laughs> Hey guys, this tag was created by Crocheting in Agreement and then she um, tagged me in it and also told me about it because <laughs> she knew that I would love doing tags and uh, I was just recently talking about how I wish there were some more yarny related ones and then people started making them so that's cool. But it's 15 questions and I'm going to start answering them now. I'm sitting by some of my tricks so that'll be a pretty shot. <laughs> and I actually already filmed one video here so um, you'll see these on separate days but I filmed them in the same day. <laughs> Oh yeah, so number one is, what made you decide to create a YouTube channel? Well, my story, my beginning story is just like Terry from Your Enjoy Podcast, because we both started our channels for the exact same reason. Margaret Olander is a, another Yarny YouTuber that's bigger than uh, both of our channels, and uh, she was doing a giveaway in 2017, and one of, the way to enter it, you had to make a video entry uh, showing like a craft room and stuff, I think. And Terry and I both did that, and then we just continued making videos after that. So, uh, we both started <laughs> to enter giveaway, and I don't think either of us won. I know I didn't. <laughs> and um, we just kept making videos after that. Number two is, what is your most favorite video you've ever uploaded? That's kind of hard, because most of my videos are basically the same as the last video. <laughs> but, um, you know, I love sharing everything that I make. It's fun. Uh, and I love doing the vlogs, too. So, I'd probably say one of the vlogs... Uh, like the Christmas ones or something because uh, I love going back and watching them uh, to remember you know better everything it's like home videos for us you know but yeah probably the vlogs number three have you ever met any viewers or other youtubers yes I have met one in real life <laughs> and that was Kim uh, and her channel is called Kim Crafty's Corner all with K's and I'll try to link it below if I can remember. But I met her recently, like a couple weeks ago. And um, we met at a craft fair that she was doing. I've never met anyone else in real life, have I? No. <laughs> I am close to a few other ones. Um, I know Cindy from Cindy Hearts Crochet. She lives in like the middle of Alabama. And she travels around the upper part and all that. So there's probably a good chance of her and I meeting soon. And um, also a lot of them are in the, the Carolinas. So it's fairly close to me. So, there's probably better chances of me meeting some of them. I just haven't actually done it yet. <laughs> Number four. What do you feel is the uh, optimal length of a video? How do you feel you should... How often do you think you should upload? Well, for me, <laughs> I usually... I used to try to keep my videos kind of short. But, uh, me personally, I love watching long videos. Because I like having a video to watch and listen to while I'm doing certain things. Whether that be crocheting or doing the dishes or setting in the floor at the wash and dryer, doing the laundry, you know. I like to have stuff going in the background. So I like long videos. <laughs> and you can always pause the video and come back to it later. You know, you don't have to watch it all in one setting. But, and I also do speed my videos up to um, two times speed because it just helps me be able to watch everybody's videos without um, being behind. But I like long videos personally. And I just make them until I run out of what I'm saying. <laughs> like I don't try to keep them under a certain length. Uh, anymore because I just talk and when I'm done filming and then I, that's how long the video is after I edit it but um and as for uploading I like to uh, ideally I'd like to uh, upload like three or four times a week just to keep my channel analytics going up and uh to be able to update everybody constantly but I don't really have that many ideas a week for cool videos so I do I like to try to at least get one video out a week unless something's going on that I don't have time to record or edit or upload or any of that but uh, ideally, just I'd love to have a couple of videos a week. <laughs> Number five, what what is your favorite type of video to film? Hmm. I love making the No Kitchen Name episodes, but some weeks I don't have a lot to share. So um, I love filming those, but I really love doing the vlogs. I love vlogging. It's actually a lot of fun to like share your life with people. And like I said earlier, or was on the other video, I can't remember. <laughs> I just filmed the other ones. I can't remember. Um, I like being able to look back on them. So it's fun. I like blocking. It's fun. Number six. Do you have any self-imposed rules for yourself regarding your videos? Um. Hmm. Not really. I can't think of any rules that I would make for myself <laughs> for my videos. Um. Yeah. I just I try not to babble a whole lot. If I start babbling off topic, I usually I try to edit that out if it's really crazy because <laughs> I do kind of get. I veer off path sometimes, but I can't think of any other rules that I have. Um, I try to stay 
like in the no catch name episodes i do try to do the normal stuff first you know like i always like to do finished objects and whips then acquisitions or happy mail and then i share all the random stuff at the end <laughs> so that uh if people only care about the yarny bits they can watch it and leave yeah i guess that's about it i just like to keep it in order number seven how do you prepare for your next video usually i will make notes on my phone or i'll have a notepad and this is usually during the week like I, if i'm working on a new project i like to write it down write down all the details that i may need to tell you guys like the yarn and hook and where the pattern's from and if i had to change it or something i try to keep track of that that while i'm doing it and then right before i start the film i'll sit down and think about anything else i might mention and then i'll write down notes on who i need to put in the description or what kind of information i need to put down there i try to get all that done right before i film so that i can film edit and go ahead and while the video is uploading i can fill out the description box and all that i do have a description like a basic description box on my desktop like a a notepad <laughs> that i can copy and paste and then i just put all the other the new stuff on top of that um just to make it easier for myself but that's that's about all that i do to pre prepare for the next video number eight what equipment slash editing program do you use Okay, I film on my phone, which is an old phone. It's an iPhone 6. <laughs> it's not even a 6S Plus or anything. It's just a regular old 6. That's why it's kind of not that good looking. <laughs> but I had a better phone last year, but it broke. So I had to downgrade to a not-so-nice phone. And I'm hoping to get a new phone soon. I was going to try to get one for Black Friday, which is this week. But I don't really know if I want to spend the money on it. Especially with the YouTube um, changes. Because I don't know what's going to happen yet. And I'd hate to drop a lot of money on a nice phone just to film with and then everything changed and I'm not being able to make money off of YouTube anymore because if that happens I'll have to pay for the pocket completely out of my or the pocket the phone completely out of my pocket and uh, I don't know if I'm willing to drop that much money on a phone just to have a nice phone because I'm not the kind of person who wants like fancy stuff but um we'll see maybe after the new year I'll work on getting either a camera or a not nicer phone so I have better video quality but an editing software I bought editing software in 2017 around this time it was around christmas time um i was using some free version and it, i ran out because it was like a 30-day period thing and then I, I went ahead and just bought it's called power director um and the one i have is 15 <laughs> i think 17 or 18 is out now a new one comes out every year and um it works pretty good i like it a lot some of the bigger youtubes that i like to watch channels they use the same product or same system but they use the newer ones they upgrade i haven't upgraded mine yet i'm planning on it once we get a desktop computer we're, and in the new year we're planning on getting a actual desktop computer an all-in-one one and i'm going to upgrade then because right now it's on my laptop and you can only use it on one computer so after we get a new computer i will upgrade to a newer one um on it but it's a really good software it's been fairly easy to use and they they actually have their own youtube channel where he does all kinds of tutorials so that's how i've learned how to do a lot of the editing stuff that i i do on my videos is because they make videos that help <laughs> number nine do you have a facebook group instagram rivalry etc uh i have a facebook group <laughs> it's always in the description i have instagram which is also always in the description i'm not super active on instagram but i do try to i am trying to boost that because i know that would help mostly with my etsy shop um to get my bags out there and stuff because the youtube helps with that a lot but uh I want to, you know, expand my horizons or whatever. And uh, the Facebook. Eventually, I want to get my own website set up with, like, a forum on it and a blog for all the free patterns that I'm going to write. Because I've already written two and I want to produce more in the future uh, to go along with my paid-for patterns and stuff. But, um, and then once that happens, I'll probably cut down my, the amount of time I spend on Instagram and Facebook. And use the website as my main source of getting traffic to the channel and to the shop if that makes sense. <laughs> Number 10, have you ever done a tutorial? If so, and more than one, which was your favorite to film? Um, I think the only tutorial I ever done was the stitch marker one. <laughs> and it wasn't that fun to film because it's really awkward to film a tutorial getting a good camera angle where the person watching the video can see what you're doing and where you're, you can see what you're doing while you're filming it. It's really hard. In my mind, I do want to do crochet tutorials um, for my patterns. I, want, I would like to do a video tutorial for every pattern I write, even the paid for ones. Um, and then people can buy the written out form if they want to. But that's going to be in the future because, again, I want to see how the YouTube stuff goes. And um, 
I'd have to get a really good setup and probably actual camera instead of a phone. I don't know. That's, it takes a lot of work so you have to have the right kind of rig and all that set up to uh, be able to see everything clearly and for the people watching the video to be able to see it good. So that's a future thing. Number 11, have you ever held a giveaway and have you ever won a giveaway? I've had plenty of giveaways. Um, I used to, you know, I don't even know, not not necessarily one a month, but mostly one a month. Because a lot of times I give Nick Crate away and then I did some milestone giveaways. And uh, I'll probably will have some next year too after I get all the YouTube stuff's over with. And I'll see how stuff's going after that. Uh, I've won a few giveaways. I know I won one from... I've won quite a few. I've won one from Holly and I won one from Pam. I'm trying to think. I know I've won them over the year. <laughs> I haven't been entering any though lately because I, I've won quite a few of them actually. I'm usually really lucky for it's just randomly lucky I guess. But um, that's one reason I quit entering them because my name kept popping up and I was afraid people would think that they were rigged. So I, uh, I've quit entering giveaways. I Every now and then I enter one in on Instagram but I never win those ones. And uh Number 12, have you ever done a vlog a day for a month? Um, yeah. <laughs> if you guys have been watching me for a while, I, I do, do that fairly often. <laughs> Usually there's a vlog a month every other month. Because um, April... I don't know if there's one in June or July. There's one in April that like, everybody does, it's Veda. And then usually August. Um, Vlogist and then Vlogtober is October and then Vlogmas is Christmas time. Usually like every other month it seems like there's one. I do like doing them because I love vlogging. It's fun to share uh, everything that we do. <laughs> and again, I like to look back at them. But I love, I really love doing Vlogtober and Vlogmas because um, we usually do a lot of fun stuff for Halloween and Christmas. So it's fun to share all that. And actually I will be starting Vlogmas Thursday. Thanksgiving is when I'm starting it this year. Hey boo. Number 13 is, have you ever lost your Crojo? And if so, how did you get it back? I lose my Crojo all, Crojo all the time. <laughs> it's, I kind of lost it now. I do have some cotton yarn right there that I'm wanting to um, make some dishcloths for Christmas gifts. And uh, I just haven't started it yet. I need to do that because there's, there's a couple gifts that I need to get in the mail soon. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just I, if I lose my Crojo, you guys can probably usually tell because it's a win and no kitchen name episode is you know small and it doesn't have anything in it uh usually when i lose my crojo i just i i'm okay with it you know i just set it all down and ignore it <laughs> for however long i need to because i don't want to stress myself out that's usually when i will either pick up video games and start playing them again or i will start sewing or something like that i'll just do something to distract myself and then eventually i'll get it back i don't do anything to make it come back though and if i ever were to lose it for a long time i would be okay with that <laughs> it might affect the youtube channel a little bit but um I'm one of those people that don't like doing things if they stress me out. That's one thing. That's one reason I don't like doing craft fairs and stuff because I don't want to feel like I need to make a bunch of items. And I, that's one thing I, you know, I don't like doing commissions a whole lot. I only take a few commissions because I don't want to feel like I have to make something. So when I lose my crow I'm okay with that. I just find something else to distract myself with. All right, number 14. How has your channel changed? Hmm. I don't know if it has. I know when it first started, I was really awkward and scared because, you know, I wasn't used to talking to my phone. There's neighbors right outside the door, kids playing. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. Y'all would have to tell me how it's changed. I know, I don't think I've stopped doing, you know, I haven't done any crochet and chats in a while, but it's because all the patterns I've been doing lately aren't the kind I can just do and talk. Usually, <laughs> usually when there's a crochet and chat out, it's when I'm working on like a blanket or something that I can just sit there and work on while talking but um i don't know i don't think it has changed any it might it might have changed for the better i've gotten better at recording and editing and better at talking and stuff <laughs> so i guess maybe it's changed for the better i hope and the last question do you have any advice for someone thinking of starting their own channel first if you're thinking about it i would probably wait until after the new year <laughs> to see how all the youtube changes go and then assuming that goes well and you, you still want to start a channel just do it. <laughs> just start. Um, you know, look, go back to all your favorite YouTubers. All of us are any people that you love a lot. Uh, love videos is what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to be vain. <laughs> uh, go back to their first videos and watch them and see how horrible they are. And when you, when you look at those, just think, you know, it's okay to not be great as soon as you start because it's a learning curve. You, you eventually get better at looking at the camera, uh, lens instead of at yourself, which I, I still do. <laughs> but, um, 
you you get better at editing you get better at talking you know when I first started I mumbled a lot and I ummed a lot and stuff and now I, it's more like I'm actually talking to another person instead of to a reflection of myself and you uh you just you know you, you, you learn as you go you get better as you go and um I don't know it's helped me a lot uh I feel like I'm better at talking to people in real life now just from making videos and uh it's fun I feel like I have way more friends than I used to <laughs> And uh, it helps me get out of my shell, so I'm sure it would help a lot of other people. So just do it. You don't have to do anything fancy. And uh, you know, right now I'm, you're, you guys are on my phone, <laughs> sitting on a tripod that my sister gave me because my original one broke. Uh, the only reason I bought editing software is because I wanted it. Um, you don't actually need it. There's plenty of free ones out there, and you don't even have to edit anyways if you want to just film it all in one clip and upload it. A lot of people do that. And yeah, just do it. <laughs> that's, that's my only advice is just to do it. But I would wait until after the new year <laughs> because all this YouTube stuff, um, I'd hate for someone to start a channel and then have to delete it. But um, I'm not too worried about the Copa, Copa, whatever stuff because uh, I feel like if they delete it, you know, start kicking people off, that they would just lose more money. So um, I don't think it's going to be that bad. But anyways, I would, you know, to be on the side of caution, I would uh, wait till after the new year. <laughs> but yeah, so that's all of the questions. I will link her channel below, Crocheting in Agreement. And uh, again, I will tag anybody who wants to do it. So just do it. And I will put the questions in the description box below. So you can just copy them and write them out or whatever. I printed them because I'm lazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I guess that's everything. You guys will see this maybe Thursday, maybe Thanksgiving in the United States. So if it is Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving to everyone who celebrates it. Or is in America or whatever. I, I don't know if you celebrate Thanksgiving just by having dinner. But um, happy regular day to everybody else in the world who doesn't have a Thanksgiving today. <laughs> and um, today, if this is Thursday, I am filming right now currently to um, start Vlogmas. Because we got plans for Thanksgiving Day and Friday and possibly Saturday and Sunday. Uh, for sure Sunday. We're going to go to look at Christmas lights on Thursday or Sunday. Sunday night is our tradition for our family, we always get all together and go to a place near us. It's called Hidden Hollow. It's a park, um, and they decorate, and you get you can park and well, there's drive-through parts, and then you can park and walk around a bunch of other parts. That's actually right after me and Devin first started dating. We went there, and then a year later, he proposed to me there, <laughs> and then we went back when we was pregnant, and then Jesse was a baby, and now he's you know a little kid, and so it's just a big tradition. And yeah, so I babbled. I, I got quit babbling. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and hop off here and I'm gonna try to squeeze in a few more videos. So you will be seeing me in my Predator shirt a lot. <laughs> Maybe different angles, but uh, I'm just trying to get all this recording in so I don't have to worry about too much over the holiday weekend because Devin is off for four days and we're gonna take advantage of that big time. But yeah, so I'm gonna see you guys in the next video in a few minutes, but it'll be tomorrow or yesterday. <laughs> um, and uh, have a good holiday and stay safe and uh, all that jazz. So bye guys. Bye.